Well, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone uh, had a lovely evening uh, yesterday, and, uh, and we're going to kick off uh, the morning right away. Uh, I thought what I would do is just give uh, a quick uh, frame of reference for this panel on, uh, on the value-added opportunity. And I'm going to have a few slides, and then I'm going to hand it right over to our first speaker, which whom I'll introduce in a second. So what I want to share with you is an event we held in November called the Forum on Canada's Agri-Food Future. And this was intended to bring a highly diverse group of people together to look at what's possible for the Canadian agri-food sector to achieve. And our report uh, on that work is coming out next week or uh, if, we, uh, if, if we must, a few days after. So it's coming out soon, uh, and so you can check our website for it. What we did, though, uh, in discussing and looking at the issue of what's possible, we really zeroed in on one key idea, and that would be how can trust uh, actually be a catalyst for change, to tap into opportunity, uh, and frankly, a trust, as we broadly consider it, and way beyond food safety, actually can be a means to cultivate uh, or enhance our competitiveness. And that's the essence of where our, our thinking is going based on what we heard at that event. We had a lot of very diverse players come together to help us in, uh, to inspire the dialogue uh, and help provide uh, ideas from China's largest online retailer, Alibaba, to local food experts here in Canada. We had uh, Jean-Claude Dufour from Laval uh, moderate a panel of entrepreneurs from across the country, agri-food entrepreneurs. Uh, the list goes on, but I just wanted to note that we got a very diverse set of uh, perspectives on the issue of how are we reaching the consumer, how are we managing change, and how can trust uh, and its attribute, the, the attribute of trust, actually help guide thinking around where, they, uh, uh, where we could be more competitive. And so just to frame it up very, very quickly, uh, the big challenge is how do we essentially create growth, economic success, while managing some pretty profound change, whether it's climate change, producing more, while reducing uh, uh, without having an impact on water or natural capital, and dealing with a whole myriad of consumer expectations uh, on sustainability, nutrition, health, ethics, and so forth. On the other side, the big possibility, and that is uh, how can we actually enhance and retain trust across the agri-food system? How can we enhance ecosystem health? How can we increase what we're doing in the nutrient side? And how can we use this as a way to brand Canada uh, and its agri-food system and cope with some of those profound changes that we all uh, heard about in November? And then how do we enable getting there? This will be shared in our work coming out in the next number of days. But essentially, the, uh, the credibility of metrics, the importance of greater transparency and deeper collaboration both within the food system and across adjacent sectors uh, seem to be a profoundly important point that was emphasized by many of the speakers in the discussions. Uh, very quickly, and then I'm going to hand this over to our panel, uh, but when we think of trust as that enabler, what some of the ideas that, we're, that we've pointed to to move us forward that will be elaborated on in our report is basically uh, how can we secure social license, which is an, a matter that I believe will be addressed uh, today. And this is really more than just communicating well with consumers. It's really about show me. Show me the data. Validate what you're saying is good uh, for me, the planet, animals, uh, are my health of my family, uh, sustainable practices or what have you. Show me, not just tell me. The second is, can we actually use this data? Can we use this enhanced reputation to be a supplier of choice around the world and for our domestic consumers? And we get into documenting or addressing the issue of authenticity and what is that level of responsibility? A third is, how can we use and value, manage uh, natural capital in terms of uh, uh, improving productivity from the farm to the food processor or retailer? But also, how can we use that to actually reinforce that social license reputation, uh, which, uh, which uh, these issues are all integrated, as you could tell. 
A fourth is how can we innovate differently? If you think of climate change, you think of the nutrient quality of our foods, these are massive cross-cutting issues that do not stick to one segment, one silo, one entity, one province, one commodity. So we're looking at how do we change, think about uh, uh, aligning more systematically, networking uh, the R&D capacity across this country in order to tackle these cross-cutting big science questions, which is essentially a matter of how can we be a reliable supplier and better position Canada for the future. These also, when we think of trust broadly considered, are included in that. And then finally, how do we wield greater influence, both here in Canada? We're not known as one of the largest economic sectors in the country. People don't know that food processing is larger than automotive and aerospace manufacturing combined. So we're not able to leverage our strength as, a, as an economic sector. And this applies as well uh, to how we work abroad and how can we actually influence or change standards that affect the food sector here. So wielding that influence, representing the dual value of the sector, both as, a, as an economic engine and a driver for ecosystem and nutrient uh, uh, improvements is all linked. So with that, those are the, some of the ideas to help frame this discussion, uh, more to come in our report. Uh, but I'd like now to introduce to you uh, our three speakers. Each will be speaking uh, uh, in order, and then we will have hopefully a, a good discussion uh, uh, with you and, and amongst the panel. Uh, 